Hello friends, uh, in this video we will be talking about the citric acid cycle and uh, the energy consumption of the citric acid cycle and the importance of the citric acid cycle and then we will be talking about the regulation of this cycle and intermediates and and about the pathways anyways. The citric acid cycle also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle or TCA cycle lies at the heart of the aerobic metabolism. It is involved in the breakdown of all three major groups of foods like carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. So you can uh, estimate how, uh, how much important this cycle really is. The following simple animation ex uh, will tell you about the process. Now you can see polysaccharides will be broken down into simpler form glucose then through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Uh, after the glycolysis it will generate pyruvate then through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex it will produce acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA is the first and foremost precursor for providing uh, this citric acid cycle. So you must produce acetyl-CoA. For the production of acetyl-CoA from glucose, there are many much steps are involved. But acetyl-CoA is pro pro also produced via the fatty acid metabolism, which are the derivative of lipids. And also protein will be broken down into amino acids. And amino acid can also generate acetyl-CoA. So acetyl-CoA can be produced from different sources of different type of food of gr uh, group of foods. And then acetyl-CoA will involve in this acetic acid cycle. Now the glucose enters the TCA cycle by passage through the glycolytic pathway and conversion to acetyl-CoA by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Okay. Now let us look at the carbon system or let us let us go back. Okay, let us look at the carbon uh, sources. Okay. The reaction of the TCA cycle served to degrade uh, served to degrade the two carbon unit of acetyl-CoA into the carbon dioxide while transforming the energy from the acetyl group into the GTP uh, which is also equivalent to 1 ATP and reducing the power of uh, power from the NADH and FADH2 okay so pyruvate is uh, here it will convert into acetyl CoA via the system called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex then we are having the two carbon groups so two carbon ultimately will be released in two different steps we can see total two carbons are released, released as two carbon dioxides and it will also generate one GTP and then it will also uh, generate NADH and FADH2 in its successive steps. Now uh, the Ferry's wheel animation presented here the transformations of the carbon atoms in the citric acid cycle. Note uh, to get things started a four carbon unit oxaloacetate coming around the cycle is con condensed with the incoming CO C2 fragment from the acetyl CoA. However from the molecule to see detailed structure keep uh, playing the next step we can see here so the carbon dioxide is generated so we are having we are in the previous times we are having C4 and C2 two carbon molecules will be released okay in, in both these successive steps okay so you can see each step and how it is generating things up and finally again four carbon molecules generated which is the oxaloacetate right uh, then now uh, this is the exercise you don't need to talk about this anyways anyways go next uh, fine this is the citrate which is having uh, the six carbon molecules and then we are having also six carbon which is isocitrate then we are having alpha ketoglutide which is five carbon one carbon dioxide is released and we are having succinyl coa which is also five carbon no, it is 4 carbon actually. Another carbon dioxide is released and we are having 4 carbon succinate, then we are having 4 carbon fumarate, and then we are having uh, malate, which is also 4 carbon, then we are having finally oxal acid, which is 4 carbon again. Okay, so in order to talk about that, let us let us move on to the energy. Now, the TCA cycle is a major source of NADH and FADH2 for the cell as well as providing one molecule of GTP per turn of the cycle. This animation indicates the step of the life cycle, uh, the cycle at which the formation of three materials occurs. Okay. Note that a substantial fraction of the energy produced occurs after the release of two molecules of CO2. Now it will move on like this. So water and acetyl CoA uh, react with the uh, intermediates and it will generate the coenzyme uh, coenzyme is released and it will produce uh, the molecule called the citrate uh, then then it will move on li just like that and uh, then nad1 acts as the electron acceptor 
to isocitrate and it will produce the isocitrate from the accepting the electron. Carbon dioxide is released as NADH goes on to the respiratory chain and ATP production is done because the NADH is uh, the energy containing molecule. Remember? Now in the second step, so second step also the alpha ketoglutide is oxidized to NAD by the NAD plus and it is bound to coenzyme A and it will produce succinyl CoA in this step. Carbon dioxide is released as NADH goes on to the respiratory chain and production of ATP is also occurred in this step. Now GDP is phosphorylated at its uh, com combines with the phosphate group and it will produce GTP. Okay, GTP goes off uh, uh, to form ATP as coenzyme A uh, breaks away and, uh, and uh, from the succinyl CoA. Now FAD oxidizes succinate and it oxidizes, it reduced itself into FADH2 but it oxidizes as succinate. Uh, resulting FADH2 goes off the respiratory chain and it will involve in the production of ATP via the oxidative phosphorylation. Then fumarate is also hydrated and also after the hydration of fumarate no byproducts are formed in this step of the cycle and then NAD1 is again reduced and reduction of NADH will produce again the oxaloacetate which is the 4 carbon starting molecule. Another NADH is released and this NADH is again taken up through the process of oxidative phosphorylation and it will produce ATP. Okay, now let us talk about the regulation of energy. What happens if uh, there are uh, increased energy needs for the cell? As the level of the ATP falls, there is a combination of incre there is a com uh, co concomitant uh, increase of the ADP and AMP. It increases the level of ADP and AMP serve as the positive modulators for the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, citrate synthase and isocitrate dehydrogenase and this enzyme uh, will speed up the cycle to produce much more ATP throughout this TCA cycle. Notice how the speed of the C TCA cycle is affected by the modulators present. Now these are the modulators like AMP, coenzyme A, NAD+, so they will in activate pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, they will activate the citrate synthase and they will also further activate the isocytate dehydrogenase. So they will activate all these enzymes because the positive modulators are there. But if we remove the positive modulators, then the reaction will happen very very fewer steps or very very slower uh, step because in this case they uh, don't need to produce much more ATP because ATP is already there. Now if we add the negative modulators like ATP or acetyl uh, ATP or citrate or something like uh, ATP uh, like that in those cases they will not need to produce ATP so the reaction step will further slowing slowed down okay now if we add the negative modulators by contrast if the energy level for a cell rises there are increases in the concentration of NADH and ATP which causes the inhibition of the same three enzymes these are activated by the ADP AMP High NADH and ATP also inhibit the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Okay, so this is another complex where the negative modulation occurs. Normally, the regulation occurs in three steps, which we've seen in case of both positive modulators and negative modulators. But uh, negative modulators also act on the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase step. So if we add the negative modulator, you can see the ATP acetyl CoA or NADH is acting as a, a negative modulator. It will slowing this reaction further level down down at this gradient. Okay. Succinyl CoA is also acting as the negative modulator for these steps. Okay. Now if we remove this negative modulator, again it backs to the normal conformation. Now if we add the positive modulators, it will move on. So again the positive modulators act on these three steps. Negative modulators are acting on four different steps. Positive modulators are AMP, ADP or energy uh, less molecules. Negative modulators are energy heavy molecules like uh, NADH and ATP and succinyl CoA, acetyl CoA and all these things. Okay. So let's move on. Now let us talk about the intermediates of the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle also provides the intermediates of synthesis. Thus the cycle is am uh, amphibolic uh, severing both catabolism and anabolism. So if we look at uh, this in individual steps you can find here. So this is uh, the oxaloacetate. Okay. Uh, Again, this is another one, this is another one. So these are the different types of molecules. Anyways, uh, intermediates. To keep the cycle going, the level of the intermediates must be uh, replenished. Now click to replace uh, the intermediates and keep the process of TCA cycle shutting down. Now if we uh, replace this, okay, uh, 
for example um anyways now let us talk about the pathway of citric acid cycle which is the more important one now there are uh, pathway difference like linear versus the cyclic pathway because the citric acid pathway is a cyclic there is a very different response to changes uh, the concentration of the intermediates than there is with a linear pathway if uh, a pathway is conducted in a linear way then change in the concentration of any of the intermediates will uh, affect in different ways uh, in, uh, uh, than that of uh, the cyclic pa process pathway okay now in the linear pathway with a linear pathway, the, re the, the response is exactly uh, stoichiometric. Sorry. Uh, this is because of the all components go through the pathway only once. So that's why you can see the glucose will go through all these pathways only once in all these cases. Remember, if the supply of an intermediate is doubled, then the output at the end of the pathway is doubled for this one uh, trip through the process because it is linear. Experiments will uh, do this model to a linear pathway based on the glycolysis by clicking onto the boxes below to add the intermediate. Notice how much clicking, that means the adding of intermediates, is affecting the production. So let us start this glucose production. You can see the production of glucose is a linear one molecule of glucose is produced. Now if we increase the intermediate one, uh, then if we increase so if we increase each of the intermediates and it will increase our production or our yield right if we double one intermediate it will produce two molecule if we triple one then it produce triple so it is just uh, depending upon the concentration of any of the intermediates but in circular pathway uh, which is uh, by con contrast which is uh, with a circular pathway the addition of an extra equivalent of any of the intermediates in the pathway will have a long lasting and much more than stoichiometric effect on output of the cycle again click on the seeds and add and remove intermediates and which of the results over time notice the effects with this uh, has on the overall output of the GTP FADH2 and NADH by kicking only a few times that means adding a few new intermediates the productivity of the cycle is increased until the intermediates are removed or until the supply is removed so once we have increased uh, any intermediate in linear uh, linear si uh, linear phase of uh, the pathway it will uh, increase uh, by by default that means if you increase the intermediate twice uh, the the component of the pro product will be increased by twice uh, but uh, in case of circular pathway, if we add or in increase some of the intermediates, like enzymes of some of the enzymes of some of the intermediates in this pathway, it will increase this reaction and it is having a long lasting effect until and unless we remove this this these molecules, right? So not 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 okay fine. Let's move on. No, we need to move on anyways. Okay. Now Okay, fine. Okay, uh, now let us look at this. So increase this uh, these steps. So if we increase these steps, you can see uh, the production of uh, GTP FADH to NADH is increased in huge amount, right? So it is working on a great concentration and it is just working very fine, right? If we increase it much more, it will increase much more. So you don't need to talk about that anyways. Uh, the segment is completed and I hope this will help you to understand the process. Anyways, I didn't talk about uh, the citric acid cycle individual steps. So let me talk about that uh, here in detail. Okay. Uh, I hope there is no step of detail. Okay, there is no detail. Yeah, this is the detailed step. You can see here. Pyruvate is converted into acetyl CoA via the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Then acetyl CoA is converted into citrate via the citrate synthase. Then citrate is converted into isocitrate via the isomerase. Then isocitrate is converted into alpha ketoglutarate via the isocitrate dehydrogenase. And carbon dioxide is released. Then alpha ketoglutarate is converted into succinyl CoA via the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Again, NAD, NAD plus is involved, NADH is produced, and carbon dioxide is released in two consecutive steps carbon dioxide are released and these two steps are dehydrogenase steps the succinyl coa will pro provide gtp by attaching gdp and inorganic phosphate via the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase and it will produce succinate right uh, succinate no no succinate dehydrogenase uh, will produce uh, 
yeah, it's produce succinate. Then succinate synthase will bring this succinate break down this succinate into malate. Then malate dehydrogenase will act on malate and it will produce the oxaloacetate. And then again, oxaloacetate will be converted back to uh, the process acetyl coenoxal oxaloacetate will interact with each other then again produce citrate with the help of the enzyme citrate synthase so it is it is just circulating the most important thing is that isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate produces carbon dioxide alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl coe produces carbon dioxide and these two tapes also produce nadh and uh, nadh molecules and succinate dehydrogenase step produces fadh2 and succinate coenzyme production step produces GTP. So these are the steps which are important and you can memorize in your mind. Anyways, I hope this will help you. Thank you.